Anarchy. Although there were so many games this year that I didn't get to play, for better or worse in some cases, I still wanted to do some end of the year lists. This video will be one of three lists detailing my best, worst, and most boring games of 2017. This list of course will be restricted to games I actually played, and not just ones that I heard were good or were showered in praise by other reviewers. That being said, I'm going to start this list with an honorable mention. Breath of the Wild. Although, as those of you who also watch Farley Productions may have seen, I didn't actually play any of this game. I've mostly just watched him play. However, with the exception of the sequences when he's just running around the world, I tend to be rather engaged for just watching. And the game does seem fairly well put together. However, I didn't play it, and I haven't had any real interest in starting to play it, just watching him. So, with that out of the way, let's start with the list. Number 10, Vertical Drop Heroes. A fun, if simple, Castlevania E roguelike, it isn't quite up to the levels of Rogue Legacy, but was challenging enough to keep me from beating it for a bit longer than I would have thought, so it gets my number 10. Number 9, Shadows of War. Another turn in the grim cape of Talion and Celebrimbor, this sequel took its original strong points of stealth gameplay, tight controls and up-close fights, and just running around Mordor being generally a douche to the orcs, paired with an upgraded nemesis system and orcs with even more personality than the original, gets a solid title, the ninth entry on my list. Number 8, Oh Sir, the Insult Simulator. Now, I am aware this came out on Steam last year, and I did play it a little, but since it released on console this year, it falls within my rules for this list. There is something very satisfying about stringing together a random assortment of words to make ridiculous insults aimed at hapless opponents, along with that sadistic feeling of taking away words that you know they're going to need, and it makes Oh Sir worth a recommendation. The AI is a little shit, though. Number 7, Cuphead. We waited a long time for this one, and when we finally got it, every second was on display. From the scratchy audio to the authentic visuals from 50 cartoons, the art style is amazing. Putting the light-hearted visuals alongside cock-crushing difficulty that would make an entire convention center's worth of dominatrixes blush, without becoming too spirit-breaking, gives Cuphead a lot of fight this year, earning it my number 7. Number 6, Halo Wars 2. I have a soft spot for RTS games. I love the feeling of playing an expanded chess game against my opponents. With the elation of a sweeping victory or the pain of being outsmarted, Halo Wars 2 delivers an RTS experience that works well with the controller and keeps the thoughtful gameplay of most PC strategy games. As the marketing tagline says, know your enemy. Number 5, The Coma Recut. This one I played fairly recently, and I initially thought I was going to play the South Korean side-scroller slash horror game for maybe about an hour before getting bored and stopping to play something else. And I'll admit, right off the bat it wasn't looking good when the game opened with an angsty student awkwardly flirting with girls and whining to himself about his finals. But that all dropped ten minutes in when the game shifted to roaming the empty halls of your school to unravel what was going on. With Lovecraftian visuals in the latter half and more complex gameplay than I was anticipating, it certainly makes this list. Number 4, Killing Floor 2. Sometimes I need a game that's pretty mindless just to unwind, and Killing Floor 2 gives that to me. The monsters and levels are very detailed, and the action is both challenging and fairly easy at the same time. This is definitely a game I only play for short bursts, but I keep coming back to it as a means to give my mind a minute to relax while keeping my hands busy. Number 3, South Park, The Fractured, But Whole. This will sound strange, but I like offensive things, and I mean offensive without resorting to complete shock value. While the new South Park game has plenty of shock value and offensive humor, the game and story, while at times feeling more schizophrenic than the first, are very well done, and I never found myself uninterested in most aspects of the game. While most of the collectible objects just aren't that useful, I still found myself wandering around the town just to see what I could find. And the improved combat adds the extra shine to make this worth all the faces you'll make as you play through it. Number 2, Hand to Fate 2. I was a big fan of the first Hand to Fate, and the second one improves on the first in almost every single way. By giving the game more of a narrative, deeper combat, varied scenarios, and more test types in the overworld, and, of course, more cards to collect to add to your collection, I wholly recommend Hand to Fate to anyone who is a fan of tabletop games or anyone looking to go on an adventure. Number 1. Resident Evil 7 
I was actually surprised when I realized I was going to put this as my number one, but any game that I've gone this far out of my way to get as many other people to play as I have must count for something. A vastly improved story and the same fleeing in terror feeling that games like Outlast give you, while still allowing enough action to keep things lively, Resident Evil 7 has set another high mark for the genre. Although I was only fond of the arcade DLCs and outright disliked the last two DLCs, I feel that this game must be experienced by any survival horror fan at least once. So, despite my dislike of Capcom and their habit of endlessly re-releasing games for greedy reasons, Resident Evil 7 has still managed to claim the top spot of my best games of 2017.